Once Around Ixion. This is another in my series of close looks at individual objects out there in the outer solar system. And this object was discovered in an unusual way by the Deep Ecliptic Survey in 2001, lurking in the constellation of Scorpius. Now, Scorpius is, of course, the direction towards the centre of our galaxy. So there are a tremendous number of stars in this direction. Quite tricky, then, to pick out a small moving object. Designated 2001 for the year of discovery, KX76, and been tracked back to earlier images all the way back to 1982, giving us 18 years worth of orbital arc to be able to figure out the parameters of its track around the solar system. And so you can see the telescopes that we used there in the deep ecliptic survey, looking for very faint objects indeed. Now, Ixion, is a Greek mythological character, the son of Ares. He was the king of the Lapiths. And it's a long story with Ixion. There was marriage, missing dowries, horse theft, murder, exile, rescue by Zeus, lust, thunderbolts, and finally being bound to a burning wheel for all eternity. So quite a story to this character. Um, and a great name for a mystery object in the outer solar system. It's marked in green in terms of its orbital path here, taking 251 years going around the sun from a close approach, a perihelion of 30 astronomical units out to 50 AU. Um, so actually 30 AU is the distance of Neptune. So you can see that its orbit actually comes within the uh, blue line where Neptune goes um, and that is something that Pluto also does and it is indeed a Plutino it's in a three to two orbital relationship so Neptune does three orbits for every two that Ixion does and that odd numbered ratio of one and a half to one if you like means it keeps meeting Neptune in opposite sides of the sun and getting alternating gravitational tugs from it um, that keeps it in a long-term stable position. Now it's very faint, nearly magnitude 20, 19.8, a very challenging target indeed. And this is the best image that we have of Ixion from the Hubble Space Telescope. Now there are no moons in this image as far as we can see. I think the bright dot that you can see at the bottom there is a background star but there's something going on around it. Is that a dust disk? We're not sure. What we can estimate from our studies is that it uh, is quite big. Originally, it was thought to be 1,400 kilometers across, which would have made it a very large object indeed, uh, one of the larger of the Kuiper Belt objects. Now we know, it's 710 kilometers, so half that, and that puts it fourth in the group, the Plutinos, that orbit around in this same manner, in this three to two lock with Neptune. Because we haven't managed to locate a moon, we can't tell the mass. We use the orbit of moons like Charon around Pluto and the or uh, orbit of the moon there around Orcus to discover the mass of the primary using Kepler's laws. And it's spinning at a medium speed, 12 hours. So we can tell that by looking at the light curve of it. Surface wise, it's very dark and very red, covered in a lot of tholins. I've talked about that many times, the action of uh, radiation on water and what's called organic clathrates, which are where you have uh, cage-like molecules that trap others within the center of them. If you're interested in the chemistry of that, I might talk about that later in another video. But this all suggests that it is an ancient surface and there's little evidence of any of the resurfacing events and the cryovolcanism um, or uh, impacts or anything like that at this stage. Now, it may well be that future exploration can be possible. We might get closer to this one 
and be able to find out more about it. Now, it was imaged by New Horizons. It was able to take photographs from a distance of 15 astronomical units from Ixion. And it's been suggested for an orbiter mission. Now, that's a 25 year long flight path because rather than a flyby where you head route one straight towards it with a perhaps some flyby of Jupiter to pick up some speed, but you can't stop because you're going so fast, you can get there in a maybe 12 or 13 years. If you want to arrive on a much more rounded trajectory so that you can end up in orbit rather than just hurtling straight path past, you have to take a different route and it will take a lot longer. But it would be very, very interesting to learn more about it. And so that's a quick whistle stop tour once around the Kuiper Belt object Ixion for you. So thanks very much for listening. And I hope you've enjoyed that one and you get to check out some of the other Kuiper Belt objects in this little series. Thanks again.